In the heartwarming yet gripping saga of The Book Thief, set against the somber backdrop of Nazi Germany, part two, titled The Shoulder Shrug, Hitler's Birthday, 1940, unfolds with an air of tension mixed with a peculiar sense of normalcy as the Huberman household, along with the rest of Mulching, gears up for a grand celebration. Now picture this, a whole community scrambling to show their loyalty to the Fuhrer, hanging swastika flags as if they were preparing for a neighborhood block party, except this was no ordinary festivity. It was Hitler's birthday. The Nazi party members, acting as party planners with an ominous twist, make their rounds, collecting not RSVPs but fuel for a massive bonfire meant to burn enemy propaganda. Imagine the awkwardness as they knock on each door. Hi, we're here for your subversive literature, and oh, do you have any spare wood? It's in this peculiar setting that we see Hans Jr., the prodigal son fervently donning the Nazi badge, clash with his father Hans over loyalty and courage. Hans, once caught red-handed in an act of kindness towards a Jewish shop owner, finds himself in the naughty corner, blacklisted from the Nazi party. The audacity, right? Meanwhile, Hans Jr., the embodiment of misguided zeal, berates his father for not bleeding red, black, and white. The argument culminates in the iconic shoulder shrug as Hans Jr. leaves the house in a huff, a gesture so loaded with familial disappointment and ideological discord, it's almost Shakespearean. But here's where Marcus Zusak, the puppeteer of words, draws us in deeper. He uses this familial spat as a microcosm of the broader societal rifts tearing through Germany. Through the dismissive shoulder shrug of Hans Jr., were given a prelude to his own tragic fate in Stalingrad, a grim foreshadowing by our ever-present narrator, death. It's like death leans in, breaking the fourth wall, whispering, keep an eye on this one. His pride is writing checks his body can't cash. Now, the most mesmerizing aspect of Zusak's narrative isn't just the way he captures the essence of the era or the complexity of human emotions amidst turmoil. It's how he uses color, especially in this segment. The burning of books, the swastika flags fluttering ominously, and the looming specter of Stalingrad are all painted in strokes that make you feel the heat, fear, and blood, all while death, our unlikely guide, muses over the souls it will claim. In essence, this part of The Book Thief is an intricate dance of light and shadow, where personal allegiances and the grim realities of war tangle amidst the celebration of a dictator's birthday. Through the Huberman's ordeal, Zusak not only lays bare the harshness of the era, but also the resilience of the human spirit, embroiled in the fight against the gathering darkness. It serves as a poignant reminder that sometimes, the greatest acts of courage come in the simplest forms, be it a shoulder shrug or a painted over slur. And within the laughter, the drama, and the peculiar normalcy of life in Molshing, we find not just a story, but a testimony to the indomitable will to do what's right, even when the world seems veered off course. Thanks for watching our Bookly Crash Course summary video. Check out the Bookly Crash Course channel for the full chapter summary playlist and even more complete book summaries.